Okay, I want to welcome back our returning viewers and thank all the new ones for checking in. Today we have Coach Rick Torres from St. Xavier University to talk a little bit about the school, the team, and what makes both of those experiences unique for interested athletes. We're doing these videos to assist coaches looking for race walkers to get and to get exposure for their programs without having to reach out to the individual athletes and or their high school and youth coaches. Before we get started, just our daily reminder to subscribe to the channel so you're notified of new content when it's posted, and leave comments on every video so we know what you think. Coach, it's great to finally meet you, and thanks for joining yeah. us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's jump right in. Um, tell our viewers and any potential recruits about your school and what makes it a unique environment for them. Yeah, um, uh, St. Xavier University is... Um, it's located about 20 miles southwest of uh, of the city of Chicago. So uh, it's 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 a area called the Mount Greenwood area, uh, old older Irish Catholic um, neighborhood. Uh, a lot of retired firefighters, police officers, uh, public servants, uh, both active and retired. Um, so uh, I, I know uh, when you hear Chicago, you know you, you think of a lot of things, but uh, we're we're a, a little bit out out of Chicago, and um, uh, with, with in a school that uh, is is over a hundred years old. Um, the uh, the original school started in the in the city of Chicago, uh, and it was um, it was burned down uh, the uh, the Chicago fire, uh, and two things survived. Uh, one was kind of an archway, and another thing was the bell that we still have at the school. And it's rung every year uh, on the first day of uh, first week of school, um, but it's 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 a old uh, it's, it's an older, uh, very rich uh, tradition of uh, for, from the Sisters of Mercy, and uh, we are a private institution. Uh, but but one of the things that I I'm I'm in my starting my fourth year at the, at the college. Uh, one of the things that really drew me to the college um, was uh, among other things. But the, the diversity uh, at the school, and um, uh, uh, and and the other the other thing was the ability to to be able to coach full time because I've never been able to do that, um, and uh, a, a campus just big enough for some folks and and just small enough for others who are looking for that in between. Uh, we offer over I, I'd stop counting I think over seventy degrees. Um, very popular in the areas of nursing, education, uh, criminal justice, uh, business, exercise science, uh, and um, uh, 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 an array of, of master's programs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, like I guess I'm starting my fourth year. Uh, it's, it's, it's my time where... Uh, uh, I, I, I'm starting my 39th year of coaching, my fourth year there, but the last 36 years, I always had a job, and then I was able to coach, and uh, that's what that's what really attracted me to this position. Um, uh, can I just go right into it, or you want? You want oh, to ask you, 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 I was actually yeah. going to throw in a little aside because I'm a history buff, and I was just going to ask if you guys are blaming Molly the cow for <laughs> having to move out of the city. No um, one's talking. No one's talking. <laughs> um, and just to sort of mention the uh, w one of the things that a lot of people, um, young students don't understand is the difference between a college and a university is the graduate right. programs and also the number of majors. And so when yep. you when you hear a college, you you know that you're going to be a little bit more restricted to the number of majors and they may not have graduate programs. More likely yep. they don't. And universities do. So that's good information for, you know, potential, you know, incoming freshmen or transfers to, to understand yes. the difference. 
And if you want to go yeah. right into talking about your coaching history and your background and the experiences and growing athletes, yeah. go yeah. right ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, um, like I said, I, uh, when, when I got, um, I was, I was, uh, prior to coming to St. Xavier, I was at a, a small liberal arts college out of Whiting, Indiana called Calumet college of St. Joseph's. Um, I served as the AD there for five years and I was the cross country and track coach at the same time. We had 17 programs there. Uh, we didn't have any facilities. Uh, prior to that, I was at a, a, a high school for 13 years, Andrean high school, um, no indoor facilities, uh, kind of limited outdoor. Uh, prior to that, I was at another private high school, uh, Bishop Knoll High School out of Hammond, Indiana. Uh, no outdoor track, no indoor facilities. Um, and then prior to that, I was um, uh, uh, at a grade school where I where I uh, 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 started a, a track and cross country program there, and ended up um, uh, establishing a, a summer program for for athletes where we had over 100 athletes out of Gary, Indiana. In those 36 years, I've never had the ability to walk out into a track and be able to practice. I've spent the last 36 being very 36 years being very, very creative about the way I went about doing things, you know? Mm -hmm. You have so, to be. <laughs> yeah, but, but one of the things about St. Xavier University was that while I was at Calumet College, um, I started I started there with about 12 athletes. And, and when I left, we had right around 40 Um but every time we would go to the conference meet, because Calumet College and St. Xavier were in the same conference, um, I would always wonder about St. Xavier because I never saw any I never saw any athletes there, you know, or it was very limited about how many athletes were there. So when I when I made the move to St. Xavier, um, I was very curious about like what was what really was happening at the school. Um, and when I started there, I had 24 athletes um, and um, most of those were distance runners, you know, mm -hmm. Um Today, uh, as of today, we're right around 110 athletes. Um, so we've we've grown in a hurry. We've grown in a, in a very short time, um, and because we've grown in such a, a short time, um, there's been a lot of challenges that go along with that too. You know, um, but um, I, I'm I'm no stranger to those kind of things because I, as, as I've said, um, you know the the challenges of, of being at all these other institutions where I had no resources and no, no track, no track and uh, field uh, indoor or outdoor to work with. Um, I just made my way and figured things out. Uh, one of the things I will say about um, when I had my summer program, AAU program, uh, it was called the Holy Angels Track Club. There was uh, seven other track clubs in Gary. It was very, very competitive in the summer between all these track clubs. But um, uh the, the first year we qualified 12 kids. And then after that, it was like 30, 40 and, and so forth. But the thing, as I started reflecting on this is that we always had six to seven race walkers qualify for nationals, you know, and, um, you know, yes, some of them were kids that were kind of lost and just wanted to do something. And it was just happened to be an, uh, an event that they can do, but others really, really took to it. And uh, that was kind of my first, experience with with race walking and kind of learning the rules and what needed to be done and so forth so we, we did have a couple all americans uh during that time and uh, uh and you know fast forward now to san xavier and uh walk into a situation where i think there's only been one race walker there in in the entire history of the of the programs and uh, we did bring in a young lady from puerto rico um uh, last year and um or two years ago rather um, and then last year she competed and, uh, qualified for nationals indoor. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of a student of the sport now. I'm, um, and I thank you, Mike, because you gave me some really sound advice about, about race walking and like, now don't overthink it. And, and, you know, you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's distance running at a walk, you know, kind of, and, and the training and all that. So, uh, it, it, uh, opened my eyes to like, not 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 be afraid but not to overthink how the training should be and it's worked out really well now so um at a time where glad i was to hear that. Like, yeah I, at a time when i was kind of hesitant about like i i, I don't want to i don't want to do i don't want to bring race walkers in if i can't do right by them now i'm kind of like hey 
let's get some race walkers in because now I feel like I've got a good handle on how the training should be. Um, obviously, I'm always going to continue to ask questions and, and learn and, uh, um, you know, uh, reach out to resources like yourself uh, and other folks. But uh, it, it is something that I, uh, uh, I, I we are going to stick with. We're going to uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, see to it that it grows uh, and, and, and take it to another level. Not, so not just, uh, can we qualify you for NAIA nationals? No. Can we get you to do a, uh, you know, 10 K 20 K 15 K, uh, and grow in that, in that capacity as well, you know? So, nice. um, so, so it's yeah. more than just, um, having success in college, you're looking at providing them with the tools to be successful outside of, um, and you know, beyond college, if that's the path that they look to take. I would, I would like very much to do that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, um, so, so, uh, so what, um, qualities are you looking for when you're trying to recruit athletes and you're trying to identify an athlete that's going to be a good fit for your program? Um, I think those that are, um, how do I say this? I would say those that are willing to come in knowing that this guy doesn't have all the answers that I don't, I don't know everything. And that from time to time, I may have to lean on them a little bit, you know, kind of go hand in hand to get through this, you know? Um, and as, as we grow, uh, and if we grow, if we continue to bring in more of these athletes, then it's like everything else I've done up until this point. When I, when I first started, I had, I had one assistant. Um, now we have five just getting ready to add another one, six, but that commitment to to assistance for events that we've not had in the past is something that I will continue to do. So mm -hmm. uh, I know we had a um, uh, we did have a race walk assistant uh, for a short time and it didn't work out. But that that would be a commitment that I would make if if more race walkers are willing to come in is to have somebody dedicated just to them for that. Okay, yeah. um, and and just kind of go back to what you were saying as far as you know, the finding the right fit for athletes, the, the communication is, is a two-way thing. I think they can't, um, athletes can't expect that the communication from a coach is going to be always an, uh, uh, with them receiving and the coach giving it's, it's gotta be a, a back and forth, you know, to be a conversation really, right. because right. for every athlete that comes in, they're a new person and they, um, they react differently to the different, stimuli that you're going to um, expose them to and then you're waiting to see what you know how they react and so that they need to understand that it's not a one-way street it's not um part of growing into becoming a college athlete is you're giving back um, as much as the coach is giving you where you might not have done that in high school because you were yeah. still learning how just to be you know the teenager that you were and you were growing and now you're becoming an adult and so this conversation goes a little bit more equally back and forth. Right. right. And, and here's, here's the, here's uh, where uh, our, our race walker that we have not currently have is Elena Rodriguez out of Puerto Rico. Um, she did, she did very well when she was in North Carolina as well. Um, so she, she picked us because of uh, the major that she wanted to pursue. And I was very honest with her up front. I said, look, I, I know very little about race walking. I'm willing to learn. Uh, I'm willing to ask questions. I'm really, I'm willing to research, and I'm, I'm willing to commit to this. Uh, if, if you're willing to meet me halfway on this, you know, mm -hmm. I said. But I said, just understand it. And this is a conversation I have with every recruit that sits in my office. You know, I said, just understand this. We, we are at the NAIA level. You know, I said the demands uh, of, of a Division One um, uh, participant is is very different than that. At, at the NAIA level. So uh, what we try to do and what we have been doing, and that's why I'm very selective about who my coaching staff is, is that we, we, we put our, our program in, in, in this order. It's, it's the person first, it's the student second, and then it's the athlete third. And if we can keep that in order through their four years, then I, I, I'd be safe to say that they're going to have a pretty good experience. And along the way, uh, if they do all the things right and they commit themselves to being the best version of themselves as a person, student, and athlete, 
then they're going to have some success as well, you know. And if that means getting to the national championships, good for them. If that means being a conference championship, good for them. If that means breaking a school record uh, or getting personal best as they go through that, then 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 that's on them too. But you know, those conversations we have is, you know, this is what we can provide. This is what we're going to do. But the rest is kind of up to you. You know, the what what are you willing to invest into yourself? Uh, to, to make us work a little bit harder for you, you know, mm-hmm. because ultimately it's, it's really what they want out of the experience, you know? Um, and, and I, and I tell a lot of them and I'm, I'm honest with them. I'm like, if you're sitting here because you want to get to the Olympics or you want to be a professional runner, I said, we're not equipped to do that here. I said, not to say that you can't be that. I said, but that's not where our philosophy lays. Our philosophy is what, what's going to happen to you in the next 44 years. That's, that's really the important ingredient here is that, you know, what happens in the four years is one thing. But after that, you know, I want to make sure, especially the women that we bring in, I I tell them, I said, I want you leaving confident, empowered. I want you uh, uh, to be in control, make good decisions, feel good about, you know, what you just did here and and go conquer the world, you know. And and for uh, for everyone else, I just tell them, like, you know, uh, you get out of this what you put into it, you know. So, you know, what you just said, Mike, about, you know, the investment is kind of twofold. you know, they got to be a good fit for us. And then we have to be a good fit for them, you know, yeah, and uh, absolutely. It's gotta go hand, yeah, it's got to go hand in hand and it's okay. If, if, you know, if, if you move on to somewhere else uh, and, and it wasn't a good fit, but I, I'll tell you right now in, in the last three years since, since I've been the head coach and, I, and I'm not saying because of me, I, I, I contribute this to the staff. Um, our retention is probably around 95, 96% right now. Yeah. You and, know? And, 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 the biggest compliment that, that I feel like we're getting is as each class leaves, there's, there's three to four uh, athletes that, that, that are being coached, po- they're coaching, you know? So, you know, mm-hmm. it says a lot about, you know, their experience and what they've learned and how they want to continue to, you know, uh, add that experience. So to another person, you know? So um, another way of looking at that is that you're, what you're trying to do in setting goals for the individuals and for the team is to sort of build them up as young men and young women so that they have ownership of their goals and they can make those decisions in an informed manner. So, you know, they can, they can find out where, okay, do I, you know, am I looking at just making varsity or do I want to be all conference or am I going for all American or am I just here because I love track and field? Yeah, we have to identify those things, and 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 we have to know that that's you know, uh, not 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 that, and and we always tell them that like we we don't put expectations on you, you put those expectations on yourself, and we're the ones that are gonna you we steer the ship, you tell us where to go, you know, mm-hmm. and, and if and if we can do that, and they feel good about what they're doing and want a little bit more, then we'll give them more, you know, but you know, freshman year is is can be overwhelming, you know, and, and we do, I think we do a great job of, of helping them balance everything that's coming their way because the transition from, yeah, I just spent the last four years going to high school uh, from eight to four with my friends uh, eating lunch at 11 o'clock every day. And then I got practice at three and I go home and I have dinner and do my homework and I do it all over again for the next three years. You know, yeah. that all changes like real quick. So overnight they have to be, <laughs> They have to become adults real quick, you know, and make some yeah. decisions for themselves and be responsible and be disciplined and, you know, not make excuses. And, you know, that translates to, 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 to competing, you know, it's, especially with like with Atlanta too, you know, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, her and others, you know, they've got their head down. I said, do you see me with my head down? I said, I'm not disappointed. You know, if you're disappointed, then that's on you to, you know, uh, to let, let, to tell me, Hey coach, let's fix this, you know, but, you know, I, I, not once in four years, three years, have I ever talked about winning or putting any demands on them or expectations. It's just a matter of like, tell me what you want to do, where you want to go. And then let's, let's, let's figure out how we get you there. You know? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So our little fun mystery question. Yeah. Which movie series is better or do you like more the Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? I've not seen either one. Of them. You've not seen either one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to pick ones that everyone had possibly seen, and now I've you're never, the one person who's never seen them. <laughs> I've never seen them. <laughs> so now you have to ask the kids when they come back. 
and and pull them and find out which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've I've heard of them, but I don't I don't not much um, into that. I'll answer for myself. It depends on the mood that I'm in. Yeah. If I'm in a, like a silly mood, I'd rather watch Harry Potter. But if I'm in a more serious mood, I'd rather watch Lord of the Rings because they're, yeah. it's just a different feel. Yeah. Um, and and they're they're targeted towards a little bit of a different age group too. Um, okay. But okay, so I, <laughs> I've gotten all kinds of answers on, on on these questions, and that was not the one I was expecting. <laughs> Um, yeah. I want to th thank you again, Coach Torres, for uh, joining yeah. us today. It's a pleasure chatting with you, and I hope yeah. that you have a great day. All right. Same to you, Mike. Thank you.